Okay, everybody. Let's uh, have a look here at this spot, which I said was uh, pretty ugly before, and I have uh, de-uglified it. I went in and uh, I made the T-nut block that is embedded into the layout that will allow a little shelf to go in here. In fact, that bright spot in the middle there is the bolt that is holding that T-nut block in place so that I could foam in around it. And the foam has cured. I did, I set all this stuff up this morning. It's now evening. I've cut out the excess foam and laid in some more plaster cloth. So that's looking uh, roughly as even as it needs to. If I have to do some more plastering and sanding and evening and smoothing and what have you, I'll do it. Um, the tricky bit is making it decent for flex track to lay on and kind of get as much of a smooth flowing path as is reasonable. Although, even if it's not, uh, no worries, we are talking about um, a secondary or maybe even tertiary track that uh, in this scenario has probably fallen out of use. I was going to use this as kind of the discharge for spent materials from the brewing process but I think you're not part of the scenery buddy um, I think that uh, that's just not a realistic construct uh, I can, not even Coors who emits tons and tons of spent grains and hops and what have you I don't even think they ship that out on a rail car so a small brewery like this would never I don't think they would ever do anything like that so the fiction I have come up for this uh, track right here is that it used to be the uh, <clears throat> used to be the old shipping track. Um, with this this building here being the primary brew house and everything, it used to be it used to contain the entire works, and now hmm, as things have expanded, they built another warehouse facility back here that does the shipping and receiving and so on and so forth and. This was then expanded later into uh, increased brewing capacity, and I'll be building an interior to justify all of these huge windows that are on there, and uh, probably putting the uh, Two Creeks Brewery um, painted on the wall sign in this blank spot right here. You know, put it on there, then fade it all out like it's been sitting there for seven or eight decades. Um, kind of like George Selyus did with his uh, Israel Rubenstein beer wholesaler um, painted on sign on the side of uh, one of his industries. Um, kind of give it a sense of history and then above that maybe see if I can do some kind of a neon uh, for the Two Creeks Brewery now that um, HO scale neons are theoretically possible. So, But anyway, yeah, this, this track will add a bit of history that it used to be the outbound um, shipping track. Now it's fallen into disuse, and mostly it's used to, uh, well, certainly in the dock area, I think I'm going to make that where um, roll-off trucks uh, leave their containers, and that's how the spent grains and everything and other uh, procedural trash gets hauled out. So I'll probably have to modify this area a little bit, make a, a little truck road for those trucks to get in and out of there. And then the track will remain in place at least up to this point. Uh, in terms of its overall use. So it'll act as kind of a stash spot for the local plant switcher or uh, if uh, there get to be so many cars in a train that there's nowhere else to put them in order to do the runaround moves and uh, get the locomotives on the proper end of the train for uh, the end of switching here and getting things headed west or headed east again. So and thanks to, oh, Hell's Bells. I always forget these things, and I really should look them up before I start filming, but um, I saw um, a layout, I think, in Model Railroader. Well, it had to be Model Railroader, that uh, the guy was using kind of his version of a handbrake. And what he did was he had a little, uh, little pin coming up between the tracks that would be just enough to snag an axle and keep a car from rolling on a grade and because this is furnished with a little grade downhill 
I'm thinking I'm going to add a track, or add a, I'm adding a track now. I'm going to add a handbrake um, position somewhere in there so that you can put a cut of cars in there and then flip a little, uh, maybe an O-scale ground throw just so I have enough travel to move the mechanism. But something that will also raise a little pin between the rails and hold a cut of cars in place as though you had set the brakes on it. And, uh, and then when it's not in use, you flip the throw the other way and it completely disappears between the ties. And I think I'm going to do that here too. As you can see, I've got a toothpick here. Um, and this one doesn't roll as freely as the BLMA cars. But it didn't take much to send that guy down track. When I leave my BLMA cars right here, um, they almost immediately want to start rolling east. And... Um, so I'm, I think I'm definitely going to put a break, a similar kind of between the rails break for them here as well, which will actually be kind of cool because if I set this up that maybe there's not as many doors for as many cars as might be spotted here, I can set it up in such a way that, um, you know, as each car is loaded, somebody can come in, release the break, let it go one car length and reapply it, and the stack will funk and move down um, to load the next door or what have you so um, just some operational ideas and some little points of interest that I can add I'm not gonna make it as conspicuous as that other guy did it he painted the side rails red and put a big sign up there that says handbrake uh, I'm not gonna I'm gonna go, not gonna go quite that nuclear with it I think this is a small enough layout that if uh, a guest operator were to come in they can be shown these things and uh, just get familiar with the operation of the layout and how things are going to go that way. But yeah, even without uh, even without having all of the insulated tracks wired in, uh, there is enough continuous power in these three switches and on down this ladder right here, all the way to this track. That's why I put this little piece of sectional track in here um, that I could actually do some switching on this with mostly dead track. Um, just keeping the locomotives on the powered rails and using the train as kind of a reacher to get cars into here and spot that box car back there, pull the grain cars out of here, you know, set set out parts of the train. The only thing I had to do with the 050 switcher was move the train into the siding for a runaround, um, which meant just leaving the locomotives on the power track getting the train out of the way and then letting them come out that way and couple onto the proper end of it. So it's amazing what you can do with a little bit of creativity and a suspension of disbelief. But uh, I still, still I'm going to wire this, have no fear. And it will be operational and awesome and a piece of cake. So there's something else I wanted to talk about. Um, oh yeah, this, uh, this crane elevator here. Um, this is a remnant from my old layout, and I'm not I'm not putting this in here. It, as you can see, it takes up entirely too much space. I don't think the prototype would allow conditions that tight. And uh, I made some modifications to this old Walters kit that uh, are not tremendously prototypical and really just need to die. So this is just uh, there as a placeholder. Um, it's been especially useful in establishing where the covered hoppers would go in by establishing this covered area here as the unloading point. And so you have to be able to get three cars in here with the first bay of the first car inside the unloading house because that's where it has to deposit its grain. So it's been useful in establishing a limit to where the cars can be placed and how they must be operated. And uh, thanks to today's little operating session I came up with the idea that the plant switcher would come in um, kind of move the first car through, unload each bay into the chute, and then when the first bay of the second car is in place, the handbrakes are set, that first car is pulled away and dropped over into the adjacent track, and then the switcher comes back, couples onto the second car, and pulls it through the process, and so on and so forth until all three cars are now in this uh, secondary track right here. So. And then that leaves the three empties uh, just waiting on that track to be picked up by the 
next uh, train to come around. And I also found out that I can actually do four cars on this passing siding and still have clearance for the motors to get around them. So that will enhance switching quite a bit around here, make things not quite as cumbersome as I thought they would be. So this, this plan has given me a lot of room to work. Um, thank God, because it is the dead end of the railroad and we do need to turn um, a set of locomotives and kind of get them on the other end of the train so that this whole thing can operate outbound and do what it needs to do, especially since switching the lumber yard and uh, the sand and gravel yard and the uh, scrap yard are all trailing point moves only in the return direction, so everything has to be in the right order there. But we've got a couple of, uh, well, I guess it's one outbound train now. All of these cars have been switched. They've all done their time, so to speak, at uh, the various industries on this railroad. So this is one long outbound train getting ready to go. And unfortunately, it doesn't have far to go because, as you can see, there, there isn't much end of track there. But all things in their own good time. So anyway, I'm approaching a length of video at this point that uh, will tax my computer beyond reason when I have to process it. So this is the update for now. That's looking pretty. By the way, if you want to know what the foam looks like, I'm really going over now. When, I, uh, when I'm done foaming it in, I, it gets all blobbish and ugly and everything like that. And what I do is I just, you can kind of see that, that chunk there is I just let it be all blobbish and ugly. Then, where is it? Take my razor saw and, you know, come through this way. Get her just about to the halfway point. Flip it around and come through and do that. Just so I don't accidentally hit a wrong angle and dig too far into the foam. And then slice across the top like that. And it gives me a nice little uh, sponge inside there. And then later, landscaping and fascia and everything will, will cover over that. But in, underneath there is a little chunk of plywood with a T-nut in it. And so again, finding clever ways to work with foam. And, you know, as much as I had my doubts about maybe having to scrap this entire thing and go back to traditional construction, as I go through with this, it's working better and better every time. So, must mean I'm learning, and learning is always good. So, anyway, that's the way things are going around here. And now it's time for some beer with rhyming you have no fear. Alright, that's just stupid. I'm Mike Lindsay. Thanks for coming out.